come with me on this Saturday morning and we've got a Ford Cougar that has got a fa failed wheel bearing. Now this one was a little bit hard to decide which one had failed, so I'll show you how I chosen which one had failed. Not only on a bit of a test drive with a wheel bearing, when you're driving down the road, it doesn't matter which way you turn, whenever you put the weight on, that's normally the wheel bearing that's failed. Uh, but in this case, with it being four wheel drive, sometimes it can be a little bit hard to decide which one has gone. Now the driver side, even though it's four wheel drive, all the noise and vibrations will travel through the drivetrain. So how I've done it, put my hand on the coil spring, or the strut, and literally spin it, and do that on all four corners, and you can feel it. This one is just slightly rougher, so we're gonna get this one changed. Now let's get this wheel off. Now we've got the wheel off. This uh, wheel bearing is a little bit of an old school pressing bearing, so we need to remove the steering knuckle. We need to get the brake caliper carrier, the disc off, tracker end, anti-roll bar link, and then we can remove this pinch bolt out of the steering knuckle. Now that we've got the steering knuckle off, you do need to remove the um, ABS sensor. In this occasion, I have damaged it. It's completely unavoidable. Sometimes they come out easy, sometimes they break. Uh, we need to get this in the vise now, clean the circlip up, and we can hammer this dry flange out. Now we've got the knuckle in the vise, get yourself a, a good socket. It's going to fit that dry flange perfectly. Then use your copper hammer, and it should just smash out. Now this is the best part of doing these wheel bearings is getting this bearing race off the actual dry flange. Now how I do it is with oxycetylene, and the best way is getting as much heat on that as quickly as you can, so that bearing race expands and just drops off. Let's get a bit of fire on the gun. And literally, if you do it right, that dry flange is literally safe enough to touch. You're not getting any heat on there whatsoever because you're heating that up rapidly. Now we've got the steering knuckle in the press. We need to press the bearing out. And how we're going to do it is play a little bit of adult Jenga. Uh, get a socket to fit that bearing. And you also need something to support this knuckle. Ten points to anybody who can guess what that is or what it's of. Now we've got the bearing out, we need to prep the knuckle, get yourself some 3M scotch pad and literally give it a good clean rooney in there and also you need to get yourself a nice little oil can and put plenty of oil on your bearing so when you're pressing it in it'll just slide in nice and easy. And that's the bearing pressed in, uh, always make sure that you've got the magnetic strip the correct way facing the ABS sensor because I've seen people putting them in the wrong way around and they've got an ABS fault after it. Anyway, Let's get this dry flange, pre dry flange pressed back in. Now when you're pressing the dry flange in, you need to be pressing on that inner race there. And as you're pressing it in, literally keep spinning the steering knuckle just to make sure that it's going in nice and smooth. Right, let's get the steering knuckle put back on. And what I've done, just put a little uh, knuckle spreader on the back. That should just slide straight on nice and easy, you know? And there you have it, just like that, that is one wheel bearing replaced on a Ford Cougar. I've literally just got to just talk the wheels up now, take it down the road for a little bit of a test ride. I hope you all have a mint weekend. Let's get it sent.